There are times when knowing how to fabricate a duct from the flat comes in handy. The demonstrator will be using the modified shiplap tools from Glassmaster. However, Malco hand tools work in the same manner. We recognize that some prefer to use the V-groove method for hand fabrication. While this technique does not lend itself to fitting fabrication as well as the shiplap method, it is in common use. If you have V-groove hand tools, the grooving sequence you are about to see is the same. NEMA recommends the modified shiplap method for tighter side joints and stronger fittings. And we will be using shiplap tools in all of our demonstrations. This demonstration will show you how to hand fabricate a 12 by 8 duct from a 1.5 inch thick sheet of duckboard. The tools you will need to have handy for grooving include a green handled or Murphy shoe knife, measuring tape or straight edge, a guide square that matches your tools, a number one tool for the first cut, a number two four tool for the second cut, a number three tool for the third cut, a number two four tool used again for the fourth cut and a number five tool to form the stapling flap. We're going to groove a 12 by 8 duct now and we're going to use the modified shiplap tooling to do that and groove with our hand tools. One of the things that I want to make sure everybody understands with the shiplap tooling is that we have alternating panels. We'll have a panel that in this case begins with the shiplap edges, then we'll have a butt groove, a butt edge panel and then we'll have a shiplap and a butt edge panel. So we'll measure, I want to measure the inside duct panels. You should measure the, the duct after you finish grooving to make sure that you had your tooling set right. You'll notice that this first panel is 12 inches. That's the width of our duct. However, if you look at the, the depth dimension of the duct, you'll notice that it's eight inches plus an inch and a half or nine and a half inches. This panel is always your duct dimension plus your board thickness. In this case, that's one and a half inches. You can see where that comes from. If I roll this duct up and I put a mark there, I'm going to roll one more time and put a mark there. Then when I unroll, you see where the, the board came to. And if I measure between those, you'll see that it's eight inches. At this time, we're gonna, we'll begin hand grooving. But one of the things I want to say first is that if you try to groove the board in the flat, as we, with it laying flat horizontal anyway, as we push up through here, you see I have difficulty reaching across the complete board. It really helps if you have a table that you can tilt up so that you, instead of reaching all the way that direction, you're going up this direction. So at this time, we'll push this table up. And get it in the position to groove. I'll need a board. And when we lay the board on the table and we're ready to groove, we want to be sure that the female shiplap is on the bottom of the table, closest to us. We always want our tools to enter the female end of the board first. We're going to use the guide squares. This happens to be a Glassmaster guide square. We'll be using Glassmaster tooling. Now, if you're using Malco tooling, the groove sequence and the tool numbers are the same, so it'll be identical to what we're doing. One of the things we do with the square is we put grit on the back of the square so that when I set the square on the board, I don't have to have a lot of force to keep the square from moving. If you don't do that, as you run your tool up, you tend to push the square off of, off of alignment. We're going to start our grooving with the number one tool. This is the Glassmaster number one tool. You'll notice it's got a piece of metal that comes all the way down to the side. That piece of metal is going to rest on the tabletop when we groove, so we need to make sure the board is up on the table. I just take the tool, set it, hold it against the side of the board, 
hold it against the table, and I push straight up. Now, we're going to use the guide square. And the way we operate with the guide square is we always set the dimensions. The duct dimensions are here on the square. We always set the square at the right hand side of the previous groove. So you can see if I lay my knife there, then I'm at 12 inches. I'll now take the 2-4 tool. This tool does both grooves, both number two and number four. Make sure you don't orient the tool backwards. It only goes this way through the board. Now as I exit the board at the top, make sure you hold the tool flat. Don't bring it up too soon. The next tool we'll use is a three tool. And we're gonna make this an eight by 12 duct. So I'm going to set up eight inches at my groove. And again, I'll set my knife in there so that you can see I'm using the right hand edge of the, of, the, of the previous groove. Not only is it important that you not raise the tool as you come out of the board, but when you make this groove, you want to make sure you hold the tool flat. Don't raise it or lower it. Come in the board flat. And stay flat as you come up. Now we'll go back to the 2-4 tool. This again is 12 inches. And again, I'm going to put the knife in the groove so that we can see that we are indeed at 12 inches. Hold the square, take the tool again, it's a one-way tool, put it in. I've got the number 2-4 up so I know I'm going the right direction. Okay, so we've made our first three panels. Our fourth panel will end up forming the stapling flap, and we use a number five tool, 5S. This tool cuts the insulation and does quite a bit of cleaning of the stapling flap, but we'll want to address that when we get finished. So I'm going to pull the board up. I was 12, 8, 12. I want to be 8 this time. Again, the right hand groove. Now that I've grooved the board, I need to prepare that stapling flap. So what I'm going to do is this is the edge right there. That's the edge of the stapling flap. So I'm going to put my knife in and just cut the board off. Now, we've taken these knives, when you buy these knives, uh, this is a Murphy shoe knife, when you buy this knife from Murphy shoe, it, uh, it comes with a square point on the back side of it. We want to take that off, so what we do is we just grind a radius on there. The reason we grind that radius on there is so we can finish cutting through the insulation we just turn it over with our radius side down and we cut through the insulation and by pressing it against the paper, I'll make that final cut, but I won't cut through the insulation or through the facing, I mean. I pull the board up to the edge of the table 
so it makes it easier to fillet. I then slip my knife between the paper and the insulation and I simply just pull the knife down and take off the remaining bit of insulation that's adhered and then you can remove the insulation and we have our stapling flap. Now when you're ready to take the groove scrap out, it's a, it makes it easy if you pick the board up and flex it, then you can roll the groove scrap out. If you try to just get hold of it and pull while it's flat, it, it many times will leave pieces of insulation down in the groove. So just roll it and take it out. Okay, at this point we finished our duct. And you see if I fold it up, I have my rectangular duct.